B2B marketers, welcome to B2B Beacon's Leadership Series. I'm your host, Thad Kalo, CEO of Business Online and Executive Editor of B2B Beacon. Well, we are here in the lovely city of San Francisco, home to innovation, marketing technology, and yes, a lot of Priuses. But more importantly, we are joined here today with Chris Golak, the CEO and founder of Demandbase. Chris, welcome. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. I'm glad to have you. So let's kick this off. Um, display. You know, it's a hot topic, um, especially in the B2B world, and I think, obviously, enormously growing channel within digital marketing um, and and advertising. Why do you think B2B marketers struggle with how to effectively use display in generating the results they seek? Yeah, I think there's really three reasons. Well, first of all, uh, years ago, most of the technologies that were built were built around consumer internet technology and advertising, and today, now there's solutions designed specifically for the B2B marketer. And there's really three key elements. One, it has to be designed around account-based advertising, so advertising to the accounts you want to sell to. Two, um, I think it really needs to be optimized around uh, the cost of sale or subscription. So uh, the traditional CPM model is really an artifact from consumer internet where you're paying uh, a certain amount of money for thousands of impressions. And in B2B, you really want to focus on companies and you, a dollar per month per company you want to target lines up much better to a cost of sale. Interesting. Um, and the third is most uh, internet technologies for display for consumer internet are designed around click-through rate, all optimized around click-through rate. That really doesn't matter for a B2B. Um, it's really just a proxy for more sales activity. And so if you can line up B2B advertising with actual website activity from that company and actual sales activity in your CRM system, that's how you optimize for B2B advertising. And I'm guessing there's a product for that, but we'll get to there that. Is, we'll get to that in a moment. So this is gonna be a hot topic. I love it. Um, man, lots to really dig into. Uh, let's start with the first account based marketing. Super, super hot. Everyone's trying to figure it out. Who have you seen it do it successfully and what are the frameworks they're using to apply successful account based marketing in the B2B world? Well, it, it starts with sales and marketing alignment. You want to market to the companies your salespeople want to sell to, right? St- Sounds right like a game, no-brainer. Right? Yep. right? Most companies don't. They, most marketers are emailing lots of IT people or emailing lots of marketing people. And what you have is a lot of white paper downloads and leads, but they're not from companies that will ever buy. And so the sales team is frustrated, and there's no alignment there. So number one, it's, it's really about... Um, aligning the advertising around the companies you want to sell to from an account-based marketing standpoint. So a company like Computer Science Corporation, CSC, a uh, very large organization, spends lots of money on marketing. They've really retooled their entire marketing around account-based marketing. And it, it extends everywhere from advertising to site personalization right into the CRM system. So they focus on audiences or, or groups of companies that are important to them. And it it's not just about companies they want to sell to acquire new companies, it's about renewing companies, upselling companies. So it's not just about this acquisition, it's I was just going to go attention. there because yeah. that's what we love to fixate on, um, especially in the marketing world, right? Uh-huh. Which is, you know, how do we bring new, new folks in, demand generation, I, I created my marketing qualified leads or my SALs, I'm out, what's next? But you know, talk to me about how you've seen folks extend that along the customer lifecycle, if you will, successfully through account-based marketing. Yeah, you, if you look at, um, I think you have to look at the, the segments of SMBs, mid-market companies, and large enterprise. So for small businesses, they want to be big businesses, right? So new customer acquisition is front and center. As you kind of move towards enterprises, most of the revenue that um, like an SAP or GE is going to have next year is going to come from... 98% of their existing customers. So they want to figure out how to do more for their existing customers. And so it really depends on kind of the customer you're selling to, whether acquisition or retention and growth are going to be more of a priority. You know what's the interesting, um, I think, uh, irony of that situation, if I will, is we talk about that 98% of the customer the revenue that will come from an existing customer base as if we know them well, as if mm-hmm. we know who they are. But yet, even though it's 98% will come from that existing customer base, these are folks that we've never had interactions with 
um, but yet just are under the, the logo of a particular brand, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, so how, how, do, how, how have marketers that you have worked with, you know, break through to actually, you know, understand they're under the account, but at the same time marketing to a new person, new role within that organization, if you will? Yeah. You know, there's a great uh, aha moment we had with Adobe where uh, they have, you know, tens of millions of visitors to their website every month, one of the largest traffic sites on the Internet. And the enterprise team was focused on a, a certain segment of named accounts. There, I think there was 1,700 named accounts. Well, if you look at the named accounts on Adobe.com, it was only 1% of their traffic. So normally you would say, it's only 1% of the traffic, what can I do? But if you do the math, every 34 seconds, somebody from one of those named accounts is going to be on their website. That's huge. Right. So if you just flip the metric, and now it's, that's much more actionable. So then the question is, God, what can we do better when somebody is on our site? And so what we worked with them on was creating a way to uh, take their online chat tool and pop it up proactively when somebody from one of those named accounts is on their site. And instead of routing it to India, where the customer support operation is, they route it to Nancy, who handles enterprise accounts. Okay. Generated three times as many leads from those named accounts. By the way, we can say demand base if you want to say demand base. That's yeah. I'm assuming you use that technology, right? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. So let's dig into that. So you, were, you know, we talked earlier about this notion of the convergence between marketing technology um, and um, you know, content technology, if you will. I don't know if there's a, a lack of better words here. Um, how are you doing that? Let's get into the details of what that looks like. Yeah. So if you you think about account-based marketing, you want to uh, have a consistent message to a group of companies or a single company from the message that they might see out on the web in a display ad yep. to when they come to the site um, and all their experiences through your website. Marketing automation. It makes total sense, right? right? Yep. And the, the challenge has been within companies, you have a media team and media people, and then you have your demand gen team. A lot of, there hasn't been a lot of interaction. So what companies are starting to do now is kind of bring that together in these groups of audiences and how do we unify kind of the message off-site and on-site and bring those together. And so that's where our technology comes in because we've been really focused on website personalization and optimizing experiences for business audiences by industry, customer status, those types of things. And now what we've done is extend that out to the off-site experience into an online advertising model. And that, that was your next big cycle, right? So you Absolutely. had a great database of IPs and you know how to personalize the website. Now you said, let's take that outside the website itself and bring that personalization to the rest of the internet, if you will. Well, exactly. And it, I mean, there's three problems that marketers really have. And we're in the business of solving these big problems. One is the wrong companies are coming to their website. They, they, you might have 100,000 visits per month and claim victory, but if you look at that traffic, I, I can guarantee you that probably only 15% are from companies who will actually buy anything. So can I pause there for a second? Yeah. That's an interesting metric, and I don't think many are measuring that. The, the, you know, the total traffic from named accounts or account account based marketing like what does that look like in terms of your total overall traffic right exactly you know that's a huge that's probably some some insight, insightful information this market would want, want to know that's right i can go to a customer and if they say you know we sell to the retail 500 um, i can put a snippet of code on their website and come back in 2 weeks and say only 6% of the retail 500 are even aware of you guys i mean it's it's pretty jaw dropping uh, and so the way to fix that is through targeting the retail 500 with ads and bringing more of them on and be more focused. So that awareness problem is number one. Two, um, engagement. When they come to the site, uh, do they find what they need? And which what we often experience is a, a huge abandonment rate, 80% plus abandon within five seconds. And it's, it's primarily just the message does not work for the customer that's Because it's so in. generalized, they're trying, to, they're trying to deliver a message for everyone who's gonna make it there, and it's not a particular yeah. industry or a particular role, or both. Or both, think of could, companies you know? like American Express, Dell, you know, Apple, Symantec, they all ser serve consumers, small business, large enterprise. The same message doesn't work for all three audiences. And that's very easy to personalize that message. You don't have to change the whole website. Just by inserting the industry of the visitor into the message, into the tagline or the, 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 the hero image, uh, you will double or triple the amount of engagement on the site. It, we customers go through these monotonous trials and tests for four months and before they even start out, I'm, I tell them you're gonna double or triple your engagement, right? But it's, you know, it's important to test. And that's huge considering all of the investment 
that goes into content marketing and producing fantastic assets, if they don't take the next step to get there, it's all for naught, right? It's, it's wasted. So if, if you think about, um, um, if you develop content specifically for the healthcare audience, and we show, you, we show our customers that, gosh, only 10% of the healthcare companies are seeing the healthcare content. Wow. And so that's a big moment, I bet. The, yeah, yeah, the idea is bring that forward, right? When a healthcare company comes. And so a lot of people have the content, it's just buried beneath the site. And so this idea of um, personalization by Amazon.com, you know, you have one click shopping. So in B2B, I call it the zero click website. So when you come in, everything is there for you, whether you're an existing customer or prospect. Interesting. So if you had to paint the picture, and, and what I'm imagining is, you were looking at all the major elements of this, the, the offsite experience, the onsite experience, the nurturing experience. What is the, the panacea like? Who, what does that look like from start to finish in terms of this notion of really having one-to-one -one conversations at scale? That's what you're describing at a macro level, if, uh, if I'm hearing that correctly. Yeah, I think it's looking at a set of companies your sales team wants to sell to yep. and seeing how you're doing versus other companies, your competitors, uh, attracting engaging and converting the same same metrics you kind of brought up you got to connect those dots between the CRM system the website experience and any kind of advertising or media and when you can do, put those all together that's where the rubber hits the road okay love it let's transition just into talking about display for, for a moment here I know that's kind of a new uh, foray for, for mm -hmm. demand base um, how did you make that decision and how have you been able to, to get into you know, the media platforms to find the inventory to make sure that you're serving up the right content, the right folks. What, what did that look like for you guys? Yeah, it, it, it really started with the aha that the biggest, one of the biggest problems B2B marketers have is that they only target probably two or three percent of the available companies out there. So if there's six million companies in the U.S., it's not uncommon for a B2B company that only sells to 10 or 20,000. So that's just one or two percent of the companies out there. So most of the traffic coming into these sites is not from their target audience. Waste, and tons of waste. Tons of waste, right? And so the focus was like, how can we fix that? And so what we did is we, we took our proprietary data that we've built over the years where we can identify companies with a network IP address, and we started using available you know, existing DSPs that have been built for mostly consumer internet technology. And that worked really well. We were generating some great results for customers, but it wasn't as good as it needed to be. We need to optimize spend around a company and a company's activity, the sales activity, and all the available kind of demand side platforms were optimized around click through rate. So we built our own. So it's a from the ground up uh, B2B demand side platform that leveraged our proprietary data. And so we optimize the advertising around actual sales activity and website activity from the company that's important. So, all right, that's interesting. So, love the notion of moving beyond, um, you know, click through activity, which I, I totally agree is is something that um, has been holding us back in, in terms of the history of where we've come from. But how are you optimizing to sales activity? Because a lot of folks. Um, have barely even scratched the surface on attribution, let alone closing the loop. Because that's, that's what right. you're—that's what you're alluding to when you're you're optimizing against a sale, right? Yeah. So how how do you how do you get there? Well, you've heard you know the stat around you know sixty or seventy percent of the sales activity um, happens on the website before even salespeople get engaged. Yep. So if you look at and monitor the website activity from a company, that's a great proxy for sales activity. And so because we're connected into our customer's website, we can take those signals from an account and have that feedback into the display ad. So for example, if you gave me 200 companies you wanted to sell to, we start serving ads to people at those companies across the web, and we monitor the engagement from those companies. And when, Based off of the website? website yeah, signals. Engagement. Right. Okay. And so, um, we start managing the spend to get companies that aren't engaged more engaged, and companies that are highly engaged, we, we kind of throttle that spend back. And so at the end you of the day- That's interesting, so you throttle that back because they're already at a tipping point. You, already, you don't need any more exactly. off-site engagement to tip them over. It's more probably marketing automation or on-site engagement. Exactly. So you're reallocating those funds, actually going in the reverse direction I thought you were gonna say in a second, yeah. right? Um, which makes sense now that you, you, yeah. you mention it. Yeah, so to get scale, um, so with real-time bidding and programmatic, so we've built our own DSP and, and plugging into all the major exchanges. And I was just gonna say, where are you getting that inventory? Yeah, okay. all the major exchanges like you know Google, Microsoft, 
um, but also a lot of the private exchanges that are focused more on business and industry. Okay. And so, you know, we can uh, serve ads for our customers across Wall Street Journal, New York Times, business publications. Um, we definitely stay away from kind of consumer sites. Um, and we also optimize around the topic of a page. So if you want, um, if you sell the finance people, for example, um, you know, we'll be more focused on serving the ad on pages that are related to finance. Okay. How for, the, for the companies you want to sell to. I love it. How much more expensive is this than the traditional CPM models? I mean, because you're so targeted, it's got to be, it's got to cost more, right? Um, it actually costs less because there's no waste, right? At the end, okay. Yeah. Right. right, so if, if, if I told, like, let's go back to the subscription idea. So sure. if I told you it was $50 CPM, you'd go, that's expensive. But if I told you it was uh, $100 per month per account, you say, God, that sounds cheap. You know, if I'm selling to a customer and have a two-month sales cycle, $200 to build a lot more awareness and influence during the sales cycle, no brainer, right? It's 0.1% yep. of the cost of sales. Um, the numbers are not that far off. Interesting. <laughs> and so, but we don't charge CPM because um, we're not in the business of just reselling media. This is really about advertising subscription that aligns to the benefits for the customer. Predictability, scalability, and, and really simplicity around uh, cost of sales alignment. But, and people need to think of display not just for new customer acquisition, but companies coming up for renewal next quarter, and you want to upsell them a certain them. product, yep. let's start building the Remind them the new features and functions that are in either, yeah. you know, in the current existing product and their releases, absolutely. Um, what are some of the more interesting metrics that you are seeing uh, being leveraged when you're, you're being more advanced in this way that you're looking at, you know, offsite advertising? Like, are people actually looking at campaign programs by cost per sale? I mean, is that the types of metrics you're seeing coming out of this? It's, you know, people look at the percent lift in engagement from a cohort of companies. Um, that's a little bit brainy. Yeah, so what is that? It so just basically so, means there's, there's a couple things where, okay, I got the Fortune 500. They're important to me. We just sell the Fortune 500. You might have 25% of them on your site in any given month. We can get that. We can double or triple that. So, uh, so that's a big metric. So going right. from, from just market visibility, I guess. Sure. It, for lack of better terms. Yeah. Okay. And then the, there's companies that are already engaged. Do we increase the engagement from those companies as well? And so um, that's a, a key metric for people. I think what will become even more interesting when you can start pulling the CRM data in, yeah. and you have leads pipeline revenue tied to that, that's where it gets pretty exciting. We're doing that today for customers. That's fantastic. Um, what's What's been the most interesting insights you've been able to pull from something like this that has changed the way some of these big companies have fundamentally gone to market? I mean, have you seen these aha moments? I mean, it sounds like the Adobe one is a great example. Others like that. I mean, that's the stuff that, you know, people are really looking to, to tip them over the edge to move into to, to something more sophisticated. If you will. Yeah, I think this the ability to focus on companies and line, line up with sales. Yep. That's really, that's really one of the secret ingredients. I mean, if you... Just internally, if you asked our VP of sales, um, so we sell to enterprise accounts mostly, and if you asked him, um, would you rather have a lead from a CMO, from a company that will never buy, or an IT manager at Wells Fargo, he will take the IT manager at Wells Fargo all day long because he knows he can navigate within that company. Yep. But you're dead in the water if the company's... Uh, the person's from a company that will never buy. Well, you bring up a good point then. You know, I, I, we've been talking a lot about the, the company role in this, right? Um, do you have, are you leveraging information and how so to to market not only to these companies, but the specific roles within these companies? How do you actually know to, that you're actually getting in front of the right folks? Because the HR manager is certainly different than the IT manager, right? Well, that's right. So we look at kind of persona-based or role-based. So it's kind of, think of it more as kind of departments, finance versus marketing versus IT. I think if you really get into the title based, you know, through cookies, through publisher and registration data, it's just the data quality is horrible because I think it's 50% of the people put in the wrong title. Um, a lot of the data is bogus or it's out of date. So the, using kind of cookie pools from an available market just doesn't work as well. Um, so we've looked at the contextual relevancy of a page. So this, this is a topic on IT security. So if I sell to IT people and this is the right company, I will serve that ad. Interesting. So we, you can look at that, and what's really so it's really at the, it's really at the 
advertising level that you're actually matching that up. Where absolutely okay, yeah. interesting. So it's not yeah. at the cookie or data level, uh, which is a different approach. Um, yeah, because I've I have not downloaded a white paper in at least a year. How do you know all this stuff, then, Chris? Well, no, I'm just saying that like my information <laughs> is not. I'm not filling out forms. Right. But right. Yeah, if if uh, a company sees demand base all over their site, like you know. 12 unique people from the band base all over the website and we haven't filled out a white paper, they should be contacting us, right? Yep. Let me pivot into something else that I think yep. is um, pretty apropos in, in terms of uh, you know, B2B marketing is the notion of leveraging display, t leveraging display and interest, right, at, at some level to influence intent. So you're, you're actually creating demand. You're, you're, you're potentially bringing to market products and services that these individuals may or may not know exist and thereby beginning that journey of search. Okay, wow, well, I may need to solve this problem. So they begin. So are you able to connect um, you know, the influence that display is having to search and then any interesting insights around that? Yeah, you know, that's always been a, a, one of the first visions of the company is how can we make paid search work for B2B? Because I want to buy these keywords and interests, but only from the set of 1,000 companies. Yep. And so if we can infuse our technology into Google or Bing, that's that's pretty interesting because not only can you serve ads more effectively, um, but you can also message more effectively. And have they? I mean, obviously, very, you know, resource companies, right? They right. have great resources to tap into. Have they not done that because of privacy issues? Why haven't they already been in, you know heading down that path? Because it sounds like from a display perspective, you, I mean, you've already obviously gone in and taken that uh, approach. But why why haven't they looked at that from a paid I think perspective? It's just, uh, some of it's B two B awareness, um, th you know the the belief that you know the B two C is so much larger. In, in so general. you're saying total market size? Uh, it's it's B two B has just underserved yep. over the years, and it's just created so much more awareness over the last few years, and um, so I, I think we'll see a lot more attention to that. And I think with you know the increase in content marketing, increase in display advertising, especially with larger companies. I think that's the next, you know, big area. Okay. Big so, if I, so if I heard that correctly, it is understanding that we're creating influence through display, uh, and excuse me, creating intent, and somehow, some way, shape, or form, we need to make sure that when we're bidding on those words that we're going after from an intent perspective, that is connected to the companies we're going. After. I mean, that's the yeah. next big gap. Absolutely. To solve. And I would challenge any any marketer that if they have a list of two hundred companies to go back last year and look at all their conversions from their paid search, what percentage came from those? 200 companies that their salespeople want to sell to? Probably very, very few. And that's why the leads suck. <laughs> so, it, 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 you know, I mean, that's the reality of it. It it's all comes back to kind of awareness, engagement, and conversion for the companies your sales team needs to sell to. Sure, makes sense. Um, so, one of the last questions I'd like to ask is if you were sitting in front of a, a large audience of, of B2B marketers, all of them, if you will, hopefully this is reaching everyone. Okay. Um, what would you recommend that should be on their strategic roadmap that probably already is not, if you were giving them advice? I think it's, it is around this alignment of what companies are you targeting. Um, are they large companies, small companies, you know, what industries, and making sure that there's buy-off between kind of sales and marketing, and then understand what those accounts are doing on your site. Where are you at? You have to baseline where you're at today. And when I often do stand up in like industry talks, I ask people their conversion rates. You know, two percent people raise their hand, three percent, four percent fewer hands go up, and everybody feels really good about four percent. And then I, I turn to those people and I say, "Do you feel good that ninety-six percent of the people uh, don't want, don't complete the call to action?" Everybody kind of shrugs. And the challenge with that is, um, it's often the wrong people coming is the reason why conversions are so low. It's not because you didn't have a good offer or offer enough free coffee or whatever it is sure. that you're giving away. You have to look at conversion rates by the groups of companies you care about. Because you might have a 40% conversion rate for the Fortune 500, but you don't know it because you're not measuring that. You're not measuring at that segmented level. That's right. So where, where should we be? You know, if we were doing this well, what's a you know, standard place we should be when we're actually measuring against the types of accounts we want to go after. Them yeah, so I, you know, there's companies uh, I consider, you know, DocuSign, best in class in online. So they're selling to consumers, lots of different industries, small businesses, individuals, large companies. And, you know, their abandonment rate on the site is probably uh, one third of most companies. They, wow. I mean, it's 
20 percent um conversion rates are i i don't know the exact numbers but i would i presume they're 20 30 40 percent much higher um just because they've really leveraged marketing technology not just demand based but a lot of different technologies out there to really um take account-based marketing and take it from just a general practice to really take it to a whole new level fantastic thanks yeah. chris truly yeah. appreciate thank it thank you